Hi, everybody. Welcome to Lunch with Alumni. Um, today, we are super excited to have Jessica Gavan Smith, class of 2003. Um, so fun to have you here. Jessica is a freelance illustrator and designer. Um, that is her current work, but she's had a lot of other really interesting jobs, graduated from Michigan. So I'm thrilled um, to bring you on today, Jessica, and just learn all about you, your time at DCDS, and what you're doing now. Absolutely. I'm so excited. A little nervous. But oh, I'm no, it's going to be great. Um, okay, so I always kind of like to take it back where it all started. Um, so bring us into just who you were in the upper school. What were some of your favorite activities? Um, what sports did you play? Like, what were you up to when you were in the upper school? So I've always been an introvert. I had a very close group of friends um, and we did everything together, but I kind of kept to myself outside of that. So um, I really took to model you in. I was on the ICJ, which is the International Court of Justice. I fancied myself a lawyer. Um, and so I, that was my activities for the most part. I really dove into that. Mm -hmm. Sports wise, I did softball and okay. my senior year, I actually did snowboarding and that was the most rewarding sport that I never thought that I would actually do. So yeah, Sir Schilling was actually the coach and just getting to know him on a more personal level was like eye opening, an amazing man. And so kind of wish I had known that sooner and gone to him for advice and help along the way. Mm -hmm. But for my senior year, he definitely came in clutch. Wow, that is so cool. Was um, Mr. Myers your softball coach? Yes. Okay, so I played for him also. That's really cool. And I, I love what you shared about Mr. Schilling. So did that was your kind of, you didn't have him as a teacher or anything? No, that I way. never had him as a yeah. teacher at all. And just, you know, he's always been like so nice to the kids and oh, yeah. really pass him in the hallway and stuff. But he really took the time to teach me how to do this. And he walked me through it. And he would ask me like, how are you doing? Are you good? So like having him personally take an interest in me really meant a lot to me. Yeah. I, that's so cool. I love that. I think that's one of the special parts about country day or the, the, the faculty take like a personal interest in your development. Um, okay. So you're going through country day, you're doing all these cool things and it's time for senior year. So you have to, you know, figure out where you want to go to school. Um, how did you decide on Michigan? And then what was that transition like from a smaller environment like DCDS, um, where obviously, you know, you just talked about that super one on one personal um, interaction you had with faculty, then like transitioning to a bigger environment like Michigan? So I'll be honest, I'm, we're not going to paint any pretty pictures. I was a <laughs> procrastinator. I, um, looking back now, I understand that I fear the unknown. Mm -hmm. Country is such a closed microcosm and you know your day-to-day, -day, you know your everyday, you know what everything is going to look like. So to think about going out in the world and not having my life planned terrified me. I didn't realize it at that point that I was terrified, mm -hmm. but I was terrified. And so I kind of put off the college thing. I dodged my college counselors because it's something <laughs> that I didn't want to deal with. So in the end, um, we decided that I'll go to Boston, actually. I'll go to UMass Dartmouth. To okay. to my sister who was attending Harvard at the time. Okay. And so that's, that's where I was going to go. Mm -hmm. um, then we had a situation with the family and then I needed to stay closer home. Okay. Out, so I had to pivot. And again, being on the unknown, it was like, Michigan. And actually it was mm -hmm. uh, Michigan Dearborn campus. So I could mm -hmm. really be close to home. And so going there, it was an easier transition because I was a commuter. I still stayed at home. So I could okay. school back and forth. And so it kind of just felt like going to school. It didn't mm -hmm. take me out of my comfort zone or anything like that. So for me, the transition was okay. I learned to pivot and I think it worked out better for me because of the anxiety that I felt about the unknown and not having mm -hmm. my life planned, I was able to take some comfort from home still and then work, work through everything that way. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. And then so much of, you know, your job today is in, you know, you're creating, you're an illustrator. Were you involved in the arts programs when you were here at Country Day? And then did you do anything arts related um, when you were at Michigan? Um, I did take some arts. I was very interested. I've always been artistic, okay. um, but I never really thought of it as anything that I could truly 
pursue. It always just felt like a hobby, an afterthought. So mm -hmm. while in school, yes, I did do some things. I did take art classes and I definitely enjoyed them. Yeah. Um, when I was in school though, I leaned more towards the literary arts than the actual um, tangible fine arts. Okay. So I joined the literary club. I had poetry published with them and I was, wow. you know, going to join their newspaper because my major changed three times. Mm -hmm. I was going to be an English teacher. So I was going for English. I was going to be a journalist. So I went for journalism and then I finally landed on communications. Okay. And so, um, but in pursuing all of those things, I did join those activities. In I school. love that. And can you talk a little bit about that? Because I think, you know, country day students graduating, they think they have to know their major right away. Like you think like, okay, when I get to college, I have to stay on this major track, but I love what you just said. Like, can you, can you share a little bit more about like your, your switching of your majors? Because like, that is so normal and like lots of people do that. But like, you know, I think country day students always feel like exactly what you were saying earlier. Like you have to be on a schedule and a plan and things like that. Yeah, so it everything kind of happened naturally. Leaving Country Day, I thought, okay, I really enjoyed the literature. I really enjoyed, you know, all of my AP classes. And that's I think that's what I want to do. I want to write. I want to be in the in the English world. Mm -hmm. So that's when I first went and I took all of the literary classes that I could and I enjoyed them, but it wasn't, I didn't feel whole. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was a piece but I didn't feel whole. I didn't feel like that was the connection. So then I thought, okay, maybe journalism, maybe that'll do my love of knowing and learning and asking questions. And I still get to write and I still get to, at that point, leave an impact. I felt like before I wouldn't leave an impact, but it's like, if I can do an expose, if I can shed light on a situation, mm -hmm. then I can leave a lasting impact and maybe that'll fulfill me. Okay. So when I went for that, it was like, okay, then we start, we're getting more in the digital world though. So we're losing newsprints. We're losing mm -hmm. the traditional ways that I thought that I had wanted to do journalism. And we were just now getting into blogs and, you know, websites and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it yeah. was a little scary, a little unknown, a little shaky. So I was mm -hmm. like, okay, maybe this isn't the thing for me. Mm -hmm. Then I learned about communications. He was actually my advisor and he was like, well, maybe communications. It was take everything and put it in a round ball and you can bounce that ball anywhere. Right. So you'll, you'll capsulate everything that you love mm -hmm. and then you can take it wherever you want to go. And that's when I focused on communications. And that's what actually gave me the digital and graphic arts because I learned that you could visually communicate through, through the things that you create. And I was like, that's it. That's my love of art, my love of communications, my love of teaching and bringing people in and it's all encompassed and I don't have to leave a piece of me. Right. Anymore. Wow. That is amazing. And, you know, I think, I hope, you know, when students listen to this, they really take that advice because you found something that truly like took all the things that you were interested in and combined it into one. So I think that that's just amazing. Thank you for explaining that to us. Yeah. Um, so you graduate from Michigan. Can you walk us through some of the roles that you had after college and after you graduated? And what are some of the learning lessons that you took away from like your first couple of jobs out of college? So even in college, I, I had I had jobs, um, but I've always been the type of person to have more than one job. I've never liked to focus on one thing. And I always thought that that was a bad thing. You always hear the phrase, jack of all trades, master of none. Right. The whole key phrase is better than a master of one. Mm -hmm. there's a whole nother section to that that, uh -huh. that gives you hope again like I can like a lot of things and it's yes. not a bad thing and so getting out of that I always wanted to try everything mm -hmm. so I interned for the city I love my city I'm born and raised Detroit mm -hmm. and the revitalization the, revital, the revitalization and the renaissance of the city is something that's important to me mm -hmm. so to be able to be in the trenches to be seeing what the mayor at the time was doing and seeing mm -hmm. how I could see my life in Detroit was important to me so I interned with the city okay 
I also interned with um, DTE Energy. It happened to fall into my lap. And I'm here to say, I will say yeah. yes to almost anything. It's an experience. Why not see what I can learn? So mm-hmm. I interned with DTE. So cool. I learned a lot about energy. A lot. About energy. <laughs> Good. <laughs> so it's like, so now I understand solar and I understand consumption and I understand all of these things. And I see yeah. how our resources can be depleted and how detrimental that can be to all of our livelihoods. Mm-hmm. Um, really funny. I got a job working for Bartech. I didn't know this at the time, but the Barfields owned Bartech. So I was actually working for the Barfields. Okay. And, um, so, and that was an experience. It was actually doing talent acquisition and yeah. supporting that. And it's like, at one point I thought, uh, human resources might have been something. So I was like, you know, what, let me just go off of this field and see mm-hmm. what this is like. And so I worked for them for quite a long time and learned a lot about talent acquisition and dealing with people and right. supporting people in all of their things. So each job that I've had has kind of like set me up to the new stage, the next stage. And it was right. there that I actually got into my current position. I used to send out correspondence. And it'd be these boring brown envelopes. And so mm-hmm. I would flex my calligraphy. I'm designing on these envelopes. Oh my God. So pretty. People started noticing because you would put them up at the counter to be taken away. And they'd be like, who, who wrote that? Who did that? So people started coming to me. Hey, can you, can you address this? Can you do these invitations? Oh my God. That's how I first started knowing that like I had talent and that people would pay me for my talent. Mm-hmm. And I started getting asked, well, can you, can you draw? Can you make me a logo? Can you do this? And so that's how I started to morph all of that into my design career. And here wow. we are now. Here we are now, which mm-hmm. is, that is awesome. I love that. So tell us about your job now, um, mm-hmm. your day to day, who are some of your clients? Um, you know, tell us a little bit about, about your work, which is behind you. We'd love to hear about that. Yeah. So I, okay. So I have a couple NDAs, the the fun project, I have the NDAs in place. So I can't say specifically who they are, but I can tell you that I did do some logos for a local NFL player, NFL player under my belt. So I also, um, during the election, uh, political party, I did some, uh, get out the vote type graphics for them. Okay. Um, So I helped with the initiative to get people to go out and vote. Mm -hmm. Um, And currently I do a lot of local and small business logos. I say no job is ever too small. And sometimes these, the local businesses, the new startups, they have such grand ideas that force you to think outside the box. Mm -hmm. They're so fresh and new that they allow you to be your most creative. So no job is too small. I'll do anything for anybody, honestly, you know, I'm here to help. So if I I can bring your vision to life, I'll do it. And so I've learned, I've honed, and now I own my own company. Mm -hmm. I get my contracts, you know, and it's like, it's exciting. It's exciting because I took the pandemic as a time Mm -hmm. to pivot, to focus on my true passions and pursuits and to learn as much as I could Mm -hmm. to learn, learn, learn. If I'm going to be on furlough, I'm going to learn something and we're going to make something happen. Right. Wow. Okay. So your company is called Paperton. Mm -hmm. Um, And how do you get your clients? So for any alums out there and for any students who are interested in getting into freelance, you know, how do you create your business and how do you get get people to um, learn about you? So actually working at Bartek helped. So one of the sections that I worked in was dealing with um, the client was Hallmark. And so we actually staffed all of their creative designers. And so I'd be thinking like, well, I want a job like this. Like I want to work for Hallmark and design Mm -hmm. their cards. How do I do that? They actually just go through a company called Upwork. That's where you need to go, Upwork. And um, you, there's tons, thousands, hundreds of thousands of projects that they put out there and then you just submit proposals. You have Mm -hmm. your body of work, you put out proposals and say, I can do it for this amount. And that's honestly how you do it. That's how they, literally how they staff for Hallmark. That's so interesting, okay. Mm -hmm. So they don't even have like, they do not have an in-house 
no. design team. They freelance all their work. Freelance all of it. And I figured if if Hallmark can pick their people that way, then, yeah. then it's a safe and good place for me to go and market my abilities. Okay. So is that where you are now? Where you- Yeah, that's typically where I go. Um, okay. I do have some word of mouth, like the NFL player. I'm expecting mm-hmm. to get something, you know, residually down the line and right. just kind of word of mouth and like, hey, this worked out for me like that. Mm-hmm. But typically if I want bigger, like the political one, they actually reached out to me through Upwork. Okay. Oh, okay. That's so cool. All right. So- I know you mentioned, you know, during COVID, you, you took that time to like learn a bunch of things. Has COVID impacted your business at all? How have you had to, you know, rethink things if you have had to? To be honest, it hasn't, it, it enhanced my business because before I wasn't focusing on it, I wasn't doing my yeah. independent freelance and I was still working for someone else. And so once the pandemic happened though, I decided that I needed to focus on me. I needed to focus on my mm-hmm. true pursuits, my true passions. And so honestly, it worked out for me. It also reinforced what I learned when I was in 12th grade, how mm-hmm. to pivot, how to pivot successfully. I had to pivot from a planned, you know, what school I'm going to what right. that's going to look like. I had to pivot. And now I got to make this my new normal. And then with every job, you have to learn to pivot. Like, okay, they're restructuring. This is happening. And then even for yourself, I don't like this anymore. I I continue, you know, to throw good money after bad, as they say, Mm -hmm. pivot. And so the pandemic taught me pivot. (laughs) There's one thing anyone needs to learn is to pivot Mm -hmm. and to not be ashamed of having multiple pursuits. Because if I had just focused on one thing that I wouldn't have this to fall back on. Right. And because I enjoy it all, I'm able to just move. Yeah. Yeah. Keep it moving. I like Mm -hmm. that. So tell us a little bit about some of the artwork that's behind you and that project you're working on. I was contacted by an Instagram um, clothing line and they had wanted some custom work, which is actually, um, there's some bears. I can maybe send you the link of those. They're yeah. actually Louis Vuitton bears. Okay. That are um they're mug shots actually. Oh my god. And they're yeah, yeah. they're they have the LVs on them. She wanted cherries on them. So I got two LV bear mug shots and then these two are playing cards. As I told you earlier, mm-hmm. it's a passion project of mine. I wanted to make my own deck of cards, mm-hmm. but all of it from hand, from scratch. So this is the back of the card. It's really intricate. Yeah. And then there's the king of spades over there as well. Okay. So how do you do something like that? Is that uh, like a, a printing project or do you do that on, on your computer? Um, I have my iPad Pro, which is where I do most of my work. Okay. And I, just drew it. I drew it all by hand. And then I go into Photoshop onto my computer, fix it make it better then throw that into illustrator and then i sent these off actually to um walgreens just haven't printed nothing crazy and i just hung them up on the wall they're the coolest i love them um okay so we have one more question jessica um just sitting where you are today just looking back um at high school at the upper school what advice would you give to your 12th grade self keep everything in perspective Keep everything in perspective. Anything that you're going through, there are two sides to it. You can see it as a negative. You can see it as a positive. Me, instead of being anxious and having anxiety about leaving school and the unknown, instead of thinking about it as a bad thing, I wish that I had seen it as an opportunity. Mm-hmm. Every day would have been an opportunity for me to do something, anything, and that it's okay to do everything. It really is okay to do a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. And so to keep that perspective, not to say, well, you need to focus, you need to hone it in, you need to pick one and stick with it. Perspective, I can do something different every day. I can Mm -hmm. learn something new every day. I can take lessons from everything every Mm -hmm. day. And that, I wish I had that perspective of life because I think I wouldn't have wasted, maybe not wasted because I take everything in stride, Mm -hmm. but I would have come to certain conclusions sooner. Mm -hmm had I had that perspective. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Okay. Sorry. One more question. So, um, Jessica is on the alumni council at DCD. So Jessica, tell us a little bit about, you know, why you wanted to join the alumni council and, you know, what you've kind of been part of, um, or enjoyed about being part of the council so far this year. Okay. So I wanted to join the council because I felt like there was a population of country day that was missing Mm -hmm. it was hidden 
not that no one cares, but it's just unknown. Mm -hmm. And I think it's those who go through school on the conveyor belt Mm -hmm. and they don't know that they can get off. They don't know that they can be themselves. Mm -hmm. And I think that as a minority who went to country day, there are certain expectations, certain ways that people see us, Mm -hmm. you are time there. And I feel like I want it to be a place where a kid could come and be like, hey, can you talk to me? Have you had this experience? Do you know what this feels like Mm -hmm. to be heard? And I wanted kids to feel heard. For myself, I didn't struggle through school, but there are times where I didn't feel heard. Mm -hmm. I would have gone to a faculty and concerns weren't, weren't. Right. My, my, my concerns, my personal concerns are different from other kids' personal concerns. Mm-hmm. And so I felt like I wanted to kind of be there as a resource in case anyone needed a different perspective, a different take on it. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, it's like my family situation changed. I wasn't able to go out of state. And I know there's a big stigma. If you stay home, you know what I mean? That's almost embarrassing. Mm-hmm. You don't want people to know that you didn't leave the state. You didn't go off to a big college. Mm-hmm. And I wanted kids to know that it's okay. Like, Whatever you want to do, it's okay. If you mm-hmm. don't want to go off, it's okay. Yeah, you know, there's you're no you're no less than anyone else there mm-hmm. because this is what you want to focus on. So that's why I joined, um, and I've been enjoying it. The conversations, the dialogue. Everyone wants to make Country Day the best that it can be. Yes, yes. and that's what I want. I want people to feel. A community with us not like we graduated and then we all go our separate ways and we yeah. never think about it anymore because yeah. we were a family when we were there right as functional as it was yeah you know, as competitive as it was we were a family mm-hmm. yeah you know we had a shared experience and I would like that to continue yes so true well I am so happy that you're on the council and I'm really excited for us to continue our work together um in the year ahead especially so thank you so much for doing this um talk with me today I'm really excited for the students to listen to it um and I hope we can bring you to school in person soon to speak with them hopefully yes okay thank you Jessica thank you of course